I love cartoons. I don't know if you know this, but I'm kind of kiddish. I love cartoons. I use Isaiah as an excuse, so it counts. I can be like, yeah, Isaiah wants to watch robots today. I just like cartoons, okay? But he, we watched this show together called Robots. And I don't know if you've ever seen it, but you have these bad, evil, industrial robots who want to kill off all the old robots and replace them with the new shiny bots. But it began with this concept. See a need, fill a need. Because in the, in the robot world, it was all about inventions. And it was all about inventing something to help somebody. And so the good robot looks around and what did he see? He saw his dad, a dishwasher. And so he made him something that would make his life easier. Because he looked around he saw a need, and he filled that need. Today we are in Romans, chapter 12, 1 through 8. I want you to get verse 4 and 5 down, down pat, down perfectly. For just as we have many members in one body, and all the members do not have the same function, so we who are many are one body in Christ, and individually members one of another. When Christ offered us something to be part of the church, he realized that each of us had abilities. He realized that each of us had something to offer. He realized that we all have abilities. We all have different things that we're good at. We all have gifts, ways that God has really given us a special measure of faith to act out. We can all do something. And the one that we always let Satan steal from us is this one. We all can make a difference. Too often we look at this relationship when we come into Christ, when we come into the body and we see something and we go, well, we're in Christ as though it's fire insurance. I, not to quote the Simpsons, but I remember the term from the Simpsons, fire insurance. And it was this, that so many people come to God and become part of the church as fire insurance. That's it. You come so that you don't go to hell. And so what you get in this life is God stands you a million dollars and you take a hundred dollar bill off the top and go, thank you. I have hope later on. Good. I got that hope later on. I got that fire insurance bill. And you leave the stack of a million dollars of blessings, a million dollars in joy, a million dollars of being used. And you just leave that all there. You took that fire insurance off the top. Good. And you've got that for later when, you know, judgment day comes. You're like, I was, I served, I was in Christ. I followed Christ. And you miss out on everything he planned in this life. Now, is heaven better than this, the best life here? Yes. But is our life supposed to be the same as everyone around us? No. There should be something so different about us. This love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control, fruit of the Spirit. That people can look at us and go, why are you so excited? You're going to go sit there in a pew. You're going to go listen to a sermon. You're going to go sing some songs. What is up with your face? Why are you so happy? Are they going to play football at this thing? Is there going to be a, you know, afterward, they're going to have really good food? That's, that's right. That's why we're really good, right? This is the really good food. No, we are here because we realize something. God actually wants to give us more. But he calls us out in verse 1. Therefore, I urge you, brothers, by my mercies of God, to present your bodies a living and holy sacrifice, acceptable to God, which is your spiritual act of worship. Yeah, yeah, so often we say the word worship. I'm going to worship. 
which I like better than saying I'm going to the church. But in that, we've missed something, haven't we? Worship is not, I sang some songs. Worship is not, I said some prayers. I gave some. The five acts of worship. It's more. It's a life offered to God that he can turn around and bless. He tells us to present our bodies, and then he tells us what happens when we present our bodies. He says that we will be transformed. By the renewing of our mind so that we may prove what is the will of God. What is his perfect and acceptable will? I think some of us miss it. I think some of us look at this and we go, well, this is one more. You need to get out and serve God's sermon. It is. I'm not going to try to quote that one. It is. This is one of those. There's more to it than showing up to church. And I'm not saying that we should forsake the body. Don't ever get me to say that one. Because Hebrews makes it clear. Do not forsake the assembling of yourselves together as the habit of some is. But what I'm saying is you miss so much if all you're getting from Christ is you come to church on Sunday, you come to church on Wednesday, and that's it. That, that's all that happens. Because what's he talking about? He talks about teaching, serving, prophecy, exhortation giving leading mercy these are not things we're gonna do all of them in church these are things where we can do every day of our lives and what does he call us to god said i would give you heaven but what did we have to call him lord you know if he's our lord there's a word that works really good with lord that we need to figure out slave Not volunteer, slave. Now think about it. If, if we're the slaves of God, we, we admit he is Lord, right? That means he is our master. And he asks of us, what? What does he say? Us. He asks of us to be a member of the body. And to use our gifts for him. Is that really what we've offered him? Is, is what we've offered him is our whole self, our ability, our gift, the grace that he gave us to give us abilities, to give us gifts. And, and what do we do with them? Oh, oh God, I'm, I'm really busy. Well, you're a slave. Well, but, but God, you don't understand you're a slave. And in being a slave, we no longer walk away from that million dollars with that fire insurance. We walk away with that million dollars. Because Christ said, it is better to give than to receive. What a weird phrase that none of us would think of saying. He says, better to give, right? And he doesn't just say money. He says, better to give of yourself than to receive. We come to church and... There's this modern day concept of I go to church so they can serve me and please me. Well, guess what? You're probably not going to get served the way you want. Probably gonna not going to get pleased the way you want. And one day you're going to get fed up with it. And you're going to be like, they're not giving me what I want. I'm going to go and find something that I get what I want. Wow. And what happens is you have these few people. I mean, yes, they're very important. Don't ever get me as neglecting elders, deacons. They're important people. They are. But we get this concept that they're, they're the ones who are working. They're the ones who are serving. They're the members of the body. You know, they, they serve us. They take care of us. But Christ called us to be like him. On the night Christ was betrayed, what did he do? He went up to them and freaked out all the disciples. That one of them said, no, Lord, you're not going to do that. What was that? He washed their feet. Peter's like, no, God, you have no idea. This is my feet. You're God. You don't get to, you know, wash my feet. I, I serve you. You can't serve me. But what did he say? I have served you. Now go serve. He's, and they're fighting. 
Do you ever notice the apostles are fighting? They're saying, who's the greatest? The sons of thunder like have their mother go, well, can one of my sons sit on your right and one on your left? Jesus goes, you don't get it. The Gentiles, their leaders lord it over them. But you, I want you to be the greatest in the kingdom. I want you to be a servant. That word slave again. I want you to be right up there with Christ. In the very image of Christ going, I serve you. Oh, your feet are dirty. Can I wash them for you? What? Some of us don't like feet. And we have pretty clean feet these days. Now imagine, they've been walking. They traveled everywhere by foot. And he bends down, takes a towel around him, and washes their feet. And he offered them to be the greatest in the kingdom. To let them serve him. And he challenged us. And I like how he says it. All the members do not have the same function. I, I wrote a random list. I get, I get bored and I love lists. Top 10 lists, I don't care. If it's a list, I, I kind of like it. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. I just like it because it's a list. I quote it all the time because he says the fruit of the Spirit is... And now you gave me a list. I, I got excited. But I kind of wrote down just a list of just different things. And these may be small things, but they're things that they use their abilities. The bushes out front. I don't know if you know who did those. I don't know if you've noticed all the lights working here. Well, they did last night. <laughs> Cards. Calling people, serving, signing up. I mean, we know that Ray is the detail man to end all detail men. And he, he's created a sign up list where it helps us. It's easy. All you got to do is sign up, you know, meet with the person who's in charge and say, how do I do this? Can I do this? Can I serve in this function? Serve, sign up. Here's another one. How many of y'all realize that one of the most important things when we come to church has nothing to do with up here you would usually not see it it has to do with that little like little notch you get in your lip you know the little uh uh see you notice that it's like a smile almost smile but when you come in those doors and you're a visitor you notice what somebody smiling at you hi hey you want to you want that seat next to me this is a nice seat. This is the best pew in here, by the way. You need to sit with me because it's a better pew. Be friend and listen up. Just love on people. Some of you are great at visiting, you know, following up. You're like, oh, you're somewhere. I want to be there. You know, play. Sounds dumb, but sometimes it's just important that you play, that you love on kids. Teach, train up. The Bible specifically mentions a list of set, and it talks about these. Proclaim the message, acts of service, helping make disciples, encouraging, meeting a need, taking time to mentor, and showing mercy. All of those could be so much more if we got this. These are very specific. They are. But they're very specific that you could do one. That you could do something this week. Now, if I spent, as the preacher, if I spent 60 hours doing something and all y'all spent one hour, somebody look at this board over here, please. On this board, I know I can't really point around the corner, but it says 78. Does anybody know what 78 times one is? It's one hour. Just one hour this week, you go out and serve. How many hours is that? 78 hours. That is a long week for most people, right? That's an 11 hour day, seven days a week. And what was I asking? What was I saying? That's every member doing their part. Every member doing one thing. 
every member finding some way to be the body of Christ, to build up the body, to be like Christ. And what would it look like? I, I want you to imagine with me. Because this can be very negative. It can be, you know you need to get off your seats, go out, preach the gospel, get it done. Yes, it's that message. It is. But there's much more. Because did you notice that Christ used something more compelling than force? He used love. He used offering. And I want you to see something. Instead, I want you to imagine stuff. What do you think this church would look like if everybody was doing something to build up the body? Could you imagine coming here and just know you're going to get loved? You know people care. You know that you're, you've got people who want to go out with you, who want to encourage you in your walk. What would this congregation be? How would it feel? How would it feel coming in here if everybody was more concerned about serving others and less concerned about being served? Would you get served? Yes, because everybody else is serving. But you would be trying to serve and they'd be trying to serve. We'd be serving one another and we'd get to see something that only God can do. We wouldn't get what man could do anymore. Because God gave us members because we're different. What would our community experience? If we took this seriously and said, God, you are our master. You are our Lord. We are just your slaves. We get to be like you and serve. Thank you. But in this text, we see something that we mentioned earlier. Verse 2, and do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you may prove what the will of God is, that which is good and acceptable and perfect. That transformation, not later. He's not talking about when you die and are transformed to a holy being. He's talking about here, being transformed, renewed here, having that blessing that we're taking the fire insurance from and going, yeah, that's enough. But he cannot bless us unless we choose to make him Lord. And he said what? You will be blessed when you give. A lot more than when you receive. And you must just trust him enough that if I do more, I receive more blessing. If I seek him more, whew, he gives me more. If I try to give out his love, he just overflows me again. Till God-sized happenings occur. First Peter 3.21, the like figure. Sorry, that is eight souls were saved through water. The like figure into baptism now saves us. Not the washing away water, but the answer of a good conscience. A baptism, it's not the water in it that's saving you. It's the act of being willing to be baptized and allowing him to wash us. Him being Lord to cleanse us and give us a lot more than fire insurance, but also fire insurance. If there's anybody today who has not believed on him, confessed him, repented of your sins, been buried with him in baptism so that you may faithfully walk with him so that one day you may be with him in heaven. Or if there's anybody who has not been living faithfully, or if there's anybody who wants to submit to the elders here, or you just need prayers, we ask that you come now as we stand and as we sing.